Hey guys, in this video, we are going to take a look at how we can access the properties of a spline. So for this video, we will try to access uh, the vertex information like position. All right. So let's start by creating a very simple line. Um, let's say like this. And I'm using this because it is a spline shape and it's already an editable spline. So when we look at the properties of this spline uh, in the modifier panel, we'll see that it has vertex segment and spline. For now, we are just concerned with getting the vertex information. If we see it has one spline and four vertices, and I'll just quickly go and update or randomize the vertex Z position as well. So now what we'll try to do is we'll try to access the vertices of the spline. Uh, to do so, I'm going to refer the max script documentation. You can also do that. And we'll use the function which is called get not point. So it is a bit confusing uh, because there is nothing as vertex here. It's a not point. And if you see the class is also spline shape. We know for a fact that we can use dollars to get the current selection and we have line 001. So if you see the method or sorry, or the function, it's get not point and it takes a couple of parameters like which shape do we have to access and what is the spline index. Uh, so right now we have only one spline. So if you go to the modifier panel and check, we have only one spline right here. So if you want to have multiple splines and access multiple vertices, you can easily do that. So the index of this spline is going to be one because max starts with one and uh, it does not start with zero. And then we are going to specify which uh, vertex information do we need. So let's try uh, one. Now if you see it uh, basically print out minus 46, uh, 37 and zero approximately, which is the first knot point. All right, so what we'll do is we'll use the for loop to create uh, a point helper at each vertex. So we'll say, for O in one, two, this now it says like four vertices. I know about it, so let's write four. We say do, and in this for loop, we will say pt is equal to point, and pt dot name is equal to O as string because we want to change the name to the index of the vertex and we'll say pt dot position equals get not point dollars is the current selection the spline index is one and then we'll say o now let's try to run this so i'm just going to quickly run this uh, okay so now we have a spline shape and at every vertex we have a point helper generated so instead of this, you can also replace this by a box if you want to create a box. And I'm just going to rerun this. Oops. It says it gives an error. So let me try check what the issue is. Okay, we have to select this. <laughs> we did not select that. All right. So let's run this. And there you go. We have boxes created on this plane. You can create lights on the spline and the spline can be any shape. So what we can try to do is now, I'm going to delete this. Let's create a donut. Now oh, this is interesting. Now what we can do is we can create boxes on this donut as well. I'll just convert this to an editable spline. That's the requirement which has to be an editable spline. And if I just run this loop, it creates four. All right, so the next thing that we would like to do is we would like to fetch the number of vertices dynamically because not every spline is going to have four vertices, right? And it can have less or more than four vertices also. So what we, so what we do is we use a function called num knots and we provided a spline and the shape, the shape index. So if you see, we get four vertices for the first spline. And because this has two splines, uh, the second one also has four vertices. Uh, there you go. 
So now, so now what we'll do is we'll write a nested loop so that we can fetch the number of splines and number of vertices for each spline dynamically. So first of all, we need to fetch the number of splines. So for sp in one, two, num splines of the current selection. So we'll select this, do something in the loop. And what we'll do in the loop is we'll run another loop for word in one, two, num notch of the current selected spline shape and what will be the spline uh, it will be sp because we have sp in this loop it iterates through all the splines and in this one it iterates through all the vertices of that spline so here i will say pt is equal to point and pt dot name equals it, it's up to you if you want to give it or not word as string and what we'll do is we'll also add this spline so sp as string plus we go in underscore and also we can just wrap it up in a bracket just in case you want to there you go and then we will say pt dot position equals get oh, oh. not point the current selection the current spline shape and word so let's try and see if this works let's hope so it should work at least and it works beautifully so if i select everything and if i change the color of the point to C green kind of. So we see we have created points on each vertex. Now it is not restricted to only this. What we'll do is we can also create a helix like this. Let's give it some kind of let's give a couple of turns. Now let's try to convert this to a double spline and then also what we'll do is we copy this attach both so that we have multiple splines and select this and run this code if you see we have so many points created at each vertex Like I said that you can also create any geometry or any uh, object you want. So this is one of the very simplest things that you could do by accessing the uh, vertex information for a spline. So I hope this uh, video was a bit useful to you all. Uh, thank you so much for watching.